I want to know who ate my cookie and cream ice cream. And I live alone. All right, this is Mr. Norris, Teaches Science, Biology Edition. This should be the last video in our genetics video series section. This is Mr. Norris, and today we're going to talk about biotechnology. And so by the end of this video, I can express the advances in biotechnology with genetics and inheritance. So what is biotechnology? It is the use of living organisms to perform a process or modify an existing process, product. So some practical applications of biotechnology. We're talking about genetics and paternity testing um, in the medical field, gene therapy and pharmaceuticals, food and agriculture. There's some very some practical applications there, like with GMOs and even forensics when we um, DNA uh, with DNA analysis or trying to figure out who committed a crime or something like that. So the Human Genome Project kind of started a lot of this stuff. Um, the goal of the Human Genome Project was to identify all the genes in the humans, determine the sequence of its bases, uh, base pairs, and store all this information in a database. The Human Genome Process at the time of me making this video is done. So it should be done no matter when you watch the video. Um, it was actually a process during the 90s and early 2000s, and it was completed by multiple, multiple scientists across the world as they did this. One benefit, some benefits that came from the Human Genome Project was disease detections. We're able to actually identify and understand more genetic disorders. Uh, gene therapy came from this about using um, healthy genes to treat um, mutated or affected genes, um, making medicines. We learned how to make some more medicines and um, help other people and creating something called GMOs. And we're going to talk a little bit more about GMOs as we go forward. Gene therapy, in a nutshell, what gene therapy is, is the replacement of normal genes into cells in place of missing or defective ones in order to correct a genetic disorder. That's what the goal of it is. GMOs are called, uh, is an abbreviation for genetically modified organisms. Somehow the DNA has been modified. Um, and it usually done this through a process called recumbent DNA processes. Um, now most, there's a lot of food out there and you probably eat foods that are GMOs and you don't even know it. Um, one of the major GMO plants out there that farmers use are corn. Corn is a GMO. Corn has been changed throughout the years. It's not what it used to be. And now a lot of the corn we use is actually used in either high fructose corn syrup or it's used as food or for animals that we then eat later. Um, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Kraft, um, mac and cheese. If you just check your packaging, it's listed up there if there's GMOs. A lot of the packages, lot, I see a lot now when I go to the grocery store that some packaging says no GMOs. So they're trying to tell you that there's no gen genetically modified organisms in that food. Cloning, um, we do, there is cloning. Uh, does anyone know what the first cloned um, animal was? If you're saying a sheep, then you know about Dolly the sheep. If you don't know about Dolly the sheep, I suggest you go and um, YouTube, Google, look up Dolly the sheep. It's very interesting first cloned animal out there. Cloning actually happens with a lot of animals. I actually have seen where um, very rich people will clone a pet that they just had um, because they want one that looks just like it. But remember, cloning does to genetics. It just creates a genetic copy, an uh, exact genetic copy. It does not mean that um, the personality is going to be the same because personality and everything like that is factored in by the environment. Like your weight is factored by your environment. But cloning does happen naturally in mammals. We call it identical twins. Um, that is natural cloning, but we have other stuff. We have gene cloning, um, our actual organism cloning. There's a whole bunch out there on cloning. I suggest you guys go to Google, Google it. We already talked about this in a previous one when I talked previous video about special cells with stem cells, but stem cells is in our um, biotechnology. Uh, they are unspecialized cells. 
they're capable of dividing and renewing themselves for long periods of time so they can become more stem cells and then when genes are activated they can become other cells like liver cells or nerve cells or muscle cells bone cells they can just they're there they are being used to treat um many different genetic disorders or different diseases out there now when we also talk about um biotechnology we need to talk about something called transgenic organisms or recumbent dna and i mentioned this a little bit when we talked about gmos but what happens here is the combining of dna um, from two or more sources and we call this transgenics now how um going a little bit back you have to use stuff like restriction enzymes and bacteria with plasmids to get this to all happen Again, there's a lot more to it. I would go over to Google or YouTube and look it up. The last thing I want to talk about is something called DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting, let me get my pen. I'm going to need it in a moment. Um, is where we take DNA from someone and we collect it and we cut it into fragments using an enzyme. Those fragments are then placed into a machine called a gel electrophoresis, and that's what you see over here. Um, so the fragments are placed into the gel and then electricity is pulled through it and it spreads out the DNA based off the fragments where they were cut. And everyone's DNA is cut at different spots with this enzyme. So it makes what we call a DNA fingerprint and we can use this to identify criminals or even figure out um, who the parents are. And so let's talk about how to use it. So right here on the right, you see DNA fingerprints. So we have this situation. There was a break-in in Kelly Clarkson's dressing room. The criminal left behind DNA. The police had four suspects who all gave them their DNA willingly, which was compared to the DNA that was left at the scene. DNA fingerprint profiles were created. who were trying to figure out who broke into Kelly Clarkson's dressing room. So we have the crime DNA and we have the suspect's DNA. And how we do this, we look at the crime DNA and we I like to place check marks with any lines that match up with that, um, with the crime DNA from the suspects. So if we look here, we have the first one right here. We follow along in suspect two and suspect three match up. The next one, we follow that along, suspect two matches up. The third line under the crime DNA, we follow along, two, three, and four match up. The last one we follow along, two and four match up. So if we look, we're trying to see which suspect has the most check marks compared to the other ones. And if you look, suspect two did. So suspect two broke into Kelly Clarkson's dressing room and is now going to go to jail or whatever they're going to do with him. All right. Crime number, solving for crime number two. This one's a little funny. I think it is. People, my students always laugh. So Rebecca came into the house and discovered that her cookies were eaten by a person, and by someone, and the person left a blood stain on the counter. I have to give a little backstory. It was in a cookie jar. The guy, the person broke the cookie jar, cut his hand, left some blood on the counter. I don't know why. You should have cleaned it up. He has a bloody hand. Uh, she is a forensic scientist, and so she fing DNA fingerprinted the blood and compared it to the DNA profiles of her roommates, which she secretly got by, um, you know, going into their rooms and stuff and getting, like, little hair samples and stuff like that. Uh, she's trying to figure out which roommate ate her cookies and owes her money. So we have the blood stain. We have everyone else. We compare... First one, all everyone has the first one. Blood stain um, line. Second one matches up with Bob, John, and a little bit of Lisa. Next one matches up with just John. Third one matches kind of with Bob, matches up with John. Then next one, Bob, Sue, John. Next one, Bob, John, and Lisa. Next one, all four roommates match up. Next one, just John. The last one, Bob and John. So if you look, John has the most check marks. John ate her cookies and owes her money. 
But sometimes we can do it by just for who's the father or who is the baby daddy. So the situation is here. Mary is married to Bob, but had a one night stand with Larry. She got pregnant and doesn't know who the father is. She goes on to Murray to find out which guy is the father of Mary's child. So we have child here, but we're going to compare it to just Bob and Larry. So we're going to ignore Bob and Larry. We're going to ignore Larry, Mary's information. That stuff doesn't exist anymore. Remember, the child is a combination of both mother and father. So the first line would only match up with Mary, but we don't need to do that. So this next line matches up with Larry. The next line matches up with Larry and Bob, and the fourth line matches up with Larry. So who's the father? That would be Larry. So Larry's the father, and I bet there was so much drama on that episode. Let's just go from there. But that's a little bit about biotechnology and how it's used in today's world. If you want to know more, again, I urge you, go to Google. Go to um, YouTube. Look up some of this stuff. Learn some of this stuff. You never know what's going to interest you and could actually become a career in your life because using DNA fingerprinting is part of becoming a forensic scientist. But like I say, hope you learned something. And this is Mr. Norris, and he is out of this video.